Well, good morning or good afternoon to everyone, depending on where you are. I'm a Christian Bond from Asahi Net International. And uh, the presentation uh, that we have right now is the Mighty Project, supporting the unique end user at Canadian Memorial Chiropractic College. And Rebecca Teller will be our presenter today. Just to make sure you hear a couple of rules about this presentation here. Uh, everyone will be muted. So uh, if you have any questions or any comments or anything, please use the questions box on the right side of the screen. And um, if I see there's a there's time to pile on pretty quickly, uh, I'll, I'll stop Rebecca and kind of let her know what's going on. If not, we'll kind of do them, I would say, by the end, or unless Rebecca wants to stop at any point and ask me, that'll be fine also. So that's one thing out of the way. Uh, also, the session is being recorded. So uh, for some reason, if you want to share this information with someone else, later on, all this will be available on the Apareo YouTube channel. So also the instructions will be on the, uh, the website, I'm sorry, the uh, Sakai site uh, for that also. And if you have any problems right now with the audio or video, please just let me know in the questions uh, box. And if everything is okay, I'm gonna let Rebecca take over. It's all yours. Okay, great. Thank you, um, Christian. And yeah, please do stop me if you see a ton of questions coming in. Sure. Um, I'll try and remember to stop and ask and see if there's anything happening while I present. So, um, as you said, my name is Rebecca Taylor. I'm the coordinator of curriculum and faculty development at Canadian Memorial Chiropractic College. And I think we'll just get started. So during this session, um, I'm going to first introduce you to Canadian Memorial Chiropractic College, which from now on I will call CMCC because it's a lot easier. Um, and then I'll introduce you to our Sakai instance, which is called Cairo with a K. Um, that's also an acronym, just I guess a fun fact for you. And that stands for Knowledge, Information, Resources Online. Once you sort of get familiarized to our uh, Sakai and institution context, I'll show you what a standard quote-unquote Cairo or course site looks like um, at our institution. From there we'll move into more of the meat of the presentation which is to talk about um, the unique sites that we have here at CMCC and uh, what their purposes and needs are and reasons for existing. And then I'll talk about the challenges with supporting the unique uh, site end user at our institution and finish up by talking about a shifting model of support I'm working towards here as the coordinator of curriculum and faculty development. And I thought I'd just mention um, that this, this session is in the instructional design slash support stream, which is accurate because I will be talking about supporting these unique uh, site end users uh, in a few minutes. But it's sort of also a showcase as well because I'll be showing you uh, different project sites that we have here at our institution. So you'll sort of get a bit of both by sticking around. And so while I uh, go through these slides, I thought I'd give you three questions to munch on uh, while I'm talking. And so please consider during the next half hour, how does your institution regulate who's given the keys to a Sakai site in your instance? Are there any missed opportunities to bring other unique activity into Sakai at your institution? And are there unique site ideas that you could implement right now? Um, are there any ideas that you already have that you could implement at your institution's Sakai instance? So percolate those ideas while we uh, keep going. So first, uh, I wanted to introduce you to Canadian Memorial Chiropractic College, or CMCC. It's located in Toronto, Ontario. For those of you who are familiar with Toronto, Ontario, what I mean is it's actually in North York. <laughs> so it's a bit uh, north of the main downtown of Toronto that you're probably imagining with the CN Tower and all that fun stuff. It's a private, not-for-profit, post-secondary institution. Um, and it, is, it has a four-year undergraduate program. That undergraduate program is second entry, meaning you have to have a bachelor's to get in, and it can be in anything. There aren't any restrictions on what that bachelor program is. And one unique, one unique facet about our undergraduate program, which is similar to a lot of healthcare education institutions, is that when students get into their final fourth year, they are actually in clinic practicing. And so they'll spend six months in one clinic and then six months in another. 
And so the year four curriculum is very, uh, or experience for students, I should say, is very different than the first three years. In addition to our undergraduate program, we have graduate programs here. We have a continuing education division, which creates uh, content modules and, and programs for alumni and chiropractors alike. Um, and we also do research here through our institution on a variety of topics. The institution is very small. We have 170 faculty, the majority of whom are part-time, and we admit about 180 to 190 students into the undergraduate program per year. So at any given time, um, the total amount of undergrad students that we have is around 700 to 750. So it is a very small school. So now that you know a little bit about our institution, I thought I'd show you um, a little bit about our Sakai instance, Cairo. And I will probably s interchange the words Cairo and Sakai throughout this uh, presentation, so just keep that in mind. We've been using Sakai here at CMCC for about five years and have increasingly realized its potential. Since my time began at CMCC, which was about a year and a half ago, We've implemented a number of features, um, including evaluation system, which we use to conduct all of our course evaluations, Verisight, which is a plagiarism detection service, which we've just implemented uh, newly over the summer because it is a new um, uh, service, I guess, that's out there. Um, right now, you'll see staring you in the face a bright green quote and a big image. Um, what we do is we have weekly quotes, so every Saturday to Sunday night at midnight, the quote changes. Um, we try and keep these inspirational and related to education, and we actually and we actually time these to things that are happening um, in the students' lives. So when we're in an exam period, we'll have study tips or encouragement to work hard. And if we're in an exam, we talk about, you know, relaxing and the importance of, you know, reflecting and, and you know, recuperating and, and all that fun stuff. So um, that's sort of a nerdy little feature we provide to our students, which I think is really fun. And then some of you may have noticed, I'm not sure, in the toolbar on the left, you'll see a little button that says the cafeteria menu, and that's something that's fairly newly implemented as well. Um, it's very simple and straightforward, but it's a great way for students to see what's on the menu for the week so they can do some of their own personal meal planning. Um, so those are some of the things that we've been incorporating into Sakai um, even since I just arrived at the institution. So our use of Sakai is expanding and growing. Um, and personally, as uh, the coordinator of CFD, I have a lot of fun with it. Probably something I should have mentioned a few minutes ago is you probably can't tell from my job title, but the majority of the work that I do is actually with educational technology. So I train faculty in how to use Sakai at the institution, as well as iClicker and other things. I design e-learning modules that go on Sakai, um, and I implement new things like evaluation system. Um, that was a big project that I undertook in my first year working here. So um, Sakai is my little baby, and I enjoy, I enjoy it. <laughs> All right, so hopefully now you're feeling familiar both with CMCC and Cairo, and so I thought I'd move on um, and talk about the standard course site that we have at CMCC. And so you're looking at one of our many course sites. It's about public health, and it's for year four students or their final year of their undergraduate education. And on their homepage, you see there's a little synopsis about what the course is about. There's an image there what, that's supposed to represent the course. Um, and what I want to draw your attention to now are some of these tools here on the left-hand side. And so what we've done for these standard course sites, and this is essentially what makes them standard, is that we have uh, provided guidelines and regulated what tools should be in every course site. And there are six tools that, needed to, that need to be added to every course site, which are announcements, assignments, gradebook resources, syllabus, and tests and quizzes. Um, and just briefly, I'm going to mention the reason for doing that is because our curriculum is, and I guess uh, academic schedule is extremely unique compared to most universities in that students at our institution can be taking up to 21 courses in the same year, and it's not semestered. They're taking all of those courses at the same time, more or less. And so for the, from the student's perspective and for their user experience, we don't want ha to have to force them to learn how to navigate 21 different sites constantly. So we provided these 
uh, guidelines to help the student experience and to help them, you know, be able to navigate Cairo in an effective way. So, uh, as I've already mentioned, we have site guidelines and we also perform auditing before the new academic year start to make sure our course sites are up to par. And we have, in the guidelines, we talk about things that you need to do with your gradebook and you need to do with um, your, the organization of your resources tool and stuff like that. In addition to that, uh, we offer, or I personally offer training sessions. And so um, I have drop-ins where you can come in and ask me any old question you want about Sakai. I also offer a session called Cairo Basics where I go over the majority of those six tools that I listed with the exception of tests and quizzes because I have a completely separate training session about tests and quizzes since it's, since it's such a big tool. Um, and so I go over what you need to do to set up your course site and all that stuff. And in addition to that, um, I offer just-in-time support. So in any given week at the institution, um, maybe with the exception of the summer months when it slows down a little bit, um, I'll get a number of just-in-time support requests from faculty. And so um, I'm constantly in touch with the body of faculty we have here, trying to help them improve their use of Sakai and to remind them how to do certain tasks, so on and so forth. So the take-home message from this slide for now is that over time um, we've put a lot of energy and resources into developing and supporting this standard formula for our course sites. Of course we'll work with faculty who have ideas for something different they want to do and we'll work with them to figure out what tools could help them support that. And um, of course we're happy to facilitate and help implement you know, different ideas for things they want to do in their course sites. But all of that is built on this foundation that we created to set up um, a standard course site experience. And we'll build on that foundation as necessary and make sure that there's good pedagogy behind it when that happens. However, um, the focus of this presentation is not to get the details about this standard formula, despite the fact I've been talking about it for a couple minutes. Um, I just wanted to give you some context for the coming differences that I'll be discussing. And in fact, I guess just as a future advertisement, if this is interesting to you, um, CF at CF, or Curriculum and Faculty Development, CFD, we're considering um, putting in an application to present about this sort of standardized course site experience at a period of 2015. So maybe keep your eye out for that. Before I continue, maybe I'll ask Christian if there's any questions. Yes, we have two questions here. <clears throat> two questions here. Okay. One is a. Uh, do you use site template to create a standard site? Do we use a site template? Uh, yes. Actually, well, sorry. We do one of two things. If nothing's changed in the back end of Sakai, um, I'll duplicate all the sites myself over the summer months for the next year. So this, the faculty don't have to come in and, and do all these little tasks that we've set out for them every single summer. Um, if we do need to create sites from scratch because of something that's changed, I will make a site template and, and do it that way. Okay. And the other one is, could you please provide more details of providing just-in-time support? Oh, sure. Um, well, it's sort of a free-form format. I mean, um, maybe, maybe, no, I don't think I'll show you that. Okay, anyway, I keep a log of the just-in-time support that comes in. And so, you know, sometimes I'll get a phone call, sometimes I'll get an unexpected knock on the door. A lot of the times I'm getting emails and um, I'll get questions which range from a lot of typical questions we get are how do I link the PDF course outline to the syllabus tool because when we use the syllabus tool we're not really using it the right way we're just redirecting the syllabus to look at the PDF of the course outline so um, be, and because as I said before our uh, course structure isn't semestered. Faculty only have to do that kind of stuff once a year. So it's easy and understandable that they would forget how to do stuff like that. So I get little questions like that. Um, I'll get questions that have to do with troubleshooting issues. You know, this week I was talking to someone who um, who's a student reported that they got a grade in tests and quizzes, but their grade in the gradebook wasn't reflecting it. So, you know, help them tr troubleshoot that. Um, and then sometimes there's, you know, bigger issues that I, I help IT with by doing some maintenance in the back end. And you can't see it, but I'm using finger quotes there because I'm not a developer. 
I don't code, um, but there's a little there's a little bit that I can do with the administration workspace tool to help support any backend changes. Hopefully that helps answer the question. Has the person clarified anything as I've been talking, Christian? Yep, they're good to go. Okay, great. That All right, fun. thanks. Yep, last question. You good? Okay, so I'll continue then. All right, so so far um, I've been talking about the standard sort of course site formula that we have, and of course, as I said, a lot of our energy and resources has gone into supporting that standard formula, but um, as you'll see in this goofy little Camtasia video I made, there's a, a growing list of these project sites here at the bottom. And, you know, we get more and more of those requests every year and, you know, an associated growing demand for support to, to create and maintain those project sites. And so now we're going to be focusing on those. And, um, you know, something to keep in mind about these project sites as we keep going through is that these sites don't fit the standard formula that I just shared with you. They might need a different set of tools. Um, and do, do not need the annual effort to duplicate or create from scratch because that's like the main baseline dividing thing between a project site and a course site. Project site you create once and you're done. Course site needs to be created fresh every year in our case or semester in a university case. So here are some screenshots of a few of our project sites and hopefully you'll see as I go through them um, that there's here is a here is represented a range of different tools, a range of purposes, and a range of different audiences that we expect to use these sites. So first here we have uh, the Students Council site and uh, one thing I want to point out on the in their toolbar on the left hand side is that the web content tool is used heavily in their site. Um, they actually use these tools in a very neat way and that is um, the forms that are linked there by the web content tool are linked to a different uh, software we use here at our institution, Blackboard Net Community, and these forms are filled out by students. Um, Sakai will capture the data and then email it to the appropriate people. So if a student fills out an event, an event proposal form, um, it'll capture that data and then email it to um, the proper people and and talk to Blackboard in that community with that information as well. So the work for that was done outside of Cairo, but it's integrated into it um, so it appears seamless to students. So that's a pretty uh, neat thing that we're doing with that site in particular. Another example of a project site we have is the best practices for teaching online. Uh, this, this is number one. There's actually two sites, one and two, and I personally built these sites. And the purpose of these is for faculty development because I offer a faculty development session of the same name. And so during that session, I'll send the faculty to the two best practices for teaching online sites. And one of them has all the best practices built into it. And the other one is absent of all of those best practices. So they're supposed to search around the sites and find examples for good teaching practices and, and the opposite. And, and it's, it's a pretty uh, neat experience. And so you may have noticed that um, the list of tools here on this site is very similar to a course site, but that's simply because this is a faculty development session and I want to give them ideas that they can apply to their typical course site context. So I didn't go crazy with adding a bunch of extra tools, although I did add forums, which is not something we consider you know, standard here yet. Another project site that we have is called Personal Counseling. Um, this is actually a subsite um, of student services, and they use this site to disseminate information to students about the personal counseling service they have here, who to contact, how to set it up, and what to expect. And then for this slide, my fourth and final example is um, curriculum and faculty development. And you may notice it says here, welcome to the archive. Oops. That's because this site is, um, the purpose of it is for us to post our slides and resources that we use with any curriculum and faculty development event that we host so faculty can come and download those resources as needed whenever they like. And we have um, not too many tools here 
in our site, we mainly use resources just to link up the information. And recently I implemented the sign up tool um, so that faculty can come and sign up for the sessions that I offer and CFD offers um, that way. So that's been pretty neat. So now that you've seen a few of what the project sites look like, I'm going to give you a bit of a crash course in some of our other project sites as well. And please note that I've distinguished here between sites for students, which are represented uh, by orange font, and sites for faculty or staff, which are just in typical black font. So I already talked mainly about the, the one main distinguishing feature about the Students' Council site, so I'll pass by that. Um, I mentioned briefly the student services sites, but one thing I haven't mentioned yet about them is that there's one main student services site that all the students have access to, but then there's also one per year, so year one student services, year two student, student services, etc. And so resources that are, you know, really only um, meant for one of the classes of students uh, don't get seen by, by everybody. And so an example of that is um, at the end of the year, for year four, folks who want to be valedictorian, um, last year what they did was they filmed videos of their nomination, uh, I guess speeches or whatever, and then the students in the year four student services site could, could go in, watch all the videos, and then from there they'd be able to vote for the valedictorian. So that's a way to keep um, you know, information that might be confidential from year to year from each student body to the next. Um, that's the way they do it currently. And they also have sites in addition to that for personal counseling as you saw and they have another one called peer tutoring and that's just linking them to um, peer tutors and information on how to add, make use of that resource. The next one on the list is the CMCC knowledge transfer site and that's quite new to our institution. So one of our directors at our institution, he's the director of the year three curriculum of our undergraduate program. He started a LOOC or a locally open online course and he's just working on building it now. And the idea for the LOOC is for faculty um, to share new literature that they find with each other. Um, so it doesn't depend, it doesn't matter what department they're from, they can share anything that they find um, and any other faculty will have access to that. And so there's, in the resources tool, there's a huge organized, um, you know, structure of folders for all kinds of different topics and themes that relate to the profession and all the resources are organized that way. And ultimately, one of the main hopes for this LOOC is that um, uh, by faculty engaging with it, curricular discrepancies that exist in our program will be identified and reduced. So that's a, so that's a very exciting prospect. And um, again, our director is just working on building that right now, so that's an exciting new project that we have. Then we have a number of sites for faculty development. Um, I told you about the best practices for teaching online already. We also have a teacher education program, which is um, the main, or I maybe the biggest faculty development offering we have at the institution. It's equivalent to a graduate level course where they learn things about um, lesson planning, learning objectives or learning outcomes and um, you know how to incorporate educational technologies and that sort of thing. So it's a really excellent course and they use a project site for that. And we also have a site called Cairo Training Program where faculty can access resources related to Cairo, such as the guidelines for setting up your course site or the slides that I use in a Cairo Basics tutorial, um, that sort of thing. We have reference sites. Cairo Training Program fits that bill. Um, in addition, we have a site related to evidence-based practice resources that faculty can go and access anytime. And in the student interest, there's a really neat site called Everything Radiology, which has self-assessments, useful links, and extra study tools. So um, it doesn't fit the regular course site formula. All the students are in there together, and it's just for their reference so that they can increase their learning about the radiology uh, aspect of the profession. We have sites for quality assurance processes, and this is a unique time at our institution right now because we're actually going through two different kinds of quality assurance at the same time. So uh, PCAB stands for Post-Secondary Education Quality Assessment Board 
and that has to do with the accreditation of the school. So every five to ten years, um, higher ed institutions get you know approved by the government to give out degrees, and so we're going through the process of that right now, and we're also going through the process of um, getting uh, approval, which we also have to do at a regular interval, to give out a chiropractic education. So the chiropractic field has to approve us giving out chiropractic education. And that's what the 2015 self-study site is about. And so um, these two sites are under frequent use by um, staff and faculty who are working on these quality assurance process processes together. There's tons of documentation of their meeting minutes, all that sort of stuff. And then we have sites that meet um, the theme of testing and training. So I've created sandboxes for myself and a couple other admin folks here at the school so that we can be, you know, bulls in our own china shops and just mess around and play and learn things about Sakai. We recently implemented ShareStream at our institution, and so I've made it, I've made training sites for the media services staff to play around and get familiar with Sakai, which they previously hadn't used. And then in this past, you know, three months actually, we've just rolled out Office 2013 to all of the computers at the school. And so the IT department made a Sakai site with reference materials for that, uh, that any staff or faculty could go look at to get used to Office, the new Office um, programs. And then in the student interest this past summer, uh, a Cairo orientation tutorial site was made um, that really features um, the lessons tool and an e-learning module that we built with Articulate Storyline and that's used just to give brand new first year students an orientation to the LMS that we use. So that is not even all of the project sites we have, that is just a crash course in everything that we've got going on um, with these unique sites. And when I distill those sites into themes, um, of the unique needs that I've seen when I, when I think about what these different sites were trying to do, I come up with the following list. So one theme is integration with other IT systems. The prime example of that is the Students' Council site where those web content forms will link to a completely different system we have here at CMCC. Um, the next theme is access to policies and processes, and the examples of those sites are Students' Council and services, the quality assurance process sites, for example, 2015 self-study, and the Cairo training program, because that's where our faculty can go to get the standard course site guidelines. The next theme of unique needs met by the Mighty Project site are dissemination of non-course related content. So the site that we created with um, resources about evidence-based practice is a good example of that as well as anything that, uh, anything to do with any of our working groups. We usually have a few curriculum related working groups going on each academic year and they always get a Cairo site and, and post all relevant materials up there. Some of our sites um, focus is on outreach and a lot of those examples have to do with the Students Council and Student Services sites that exist. But there's actually also one that was made this year called Change Management for staff um, and faculty as well, I'm guessing. Um, our institution went, has gone through a great deal of change recently because we just changed presidents. And so this site was part of that change to help support anybody um, who, who felt they needed it with, with the coming changes. We have sites that are designed for self-directed learning opportunities. Um, a lot of them are already in this themed list slides um, because some of them meet a variety of needs. Um, some other examples are the sandboxes that I've created for myself and other admin staff, the Everything Radiology site for students, um, etc. And then the final theme um, of our project sites that we have is for collaboration. And there's lots of student-to-student -student collaboration that can happen in a standard course site. So I'm focusing on faculty-to-faculty -faculty fa collaboration or institution to faculty collaboration. That's something that's uniquely met by our project sites. And a great example of that is the LOOC that's currently being created and uh, various departmental sites that we have as well as anything to do with our quality assurance processes.
So I'm going to move on to the challenges um, in supporting all these sites. So maybe I'll check in quickly with Christian to see if there's any other questions at this point. No, we're all clear. We're good to go. Great. Okay. So um, as you can see, we have a variety of themes, a variety of needs for all of our different project sites. And so there's obviously challenges associated with those. So currently, um, as you sort of got a handle on when I was showing you our standard course site formula, the current Cairo training prax practices we have are focused solely on course sites. And so um, I've invited project site users to my typical course site training sessions, but they require the project sites have a completely different range of tools, um, completely different purposes, and, and they ask me totally different questions. And so the typical training that I have isn't really ideal for these people. And in fact, the sites that most closely approximate a typical course site setup are the ones that I personally designed for faculty development. So it's not really that helpful for all the other project sites that we have. So, um, and I guess another challenge or the next step of that challenge is that we have um, more and more demand for support by project site users. So although some of them attend the Cairo training sessions I offer that aren't really geared towards them, they're primarily utilizing just-in-time support. So now not only am I getting frequent emails and calls and that sort of thing by faculty with Sakai questions, but I also um, get those kinds of requests from staff and faculty doing unique projects. Um, Lately, I've been working really closely with student services to get them into Cairo and helping them design sort of an environment for the students. And that's been that's been really fun to do. And so I, I often go and, and work with student services, which is not at all um, expected, I don't think, by my uh, job title or description that's primarily focused on faculty development. But I enjoy it. And so obviously this has an impact on available resources. And in terms of available resources, there's only two people at this institution that provide Sakai support. Um, a fellow who works for IT who has a high-level position, and myself. And because of the amount of applications he manages and oversees, a lot of the requests that he gets for Sakai support, he will redirect to me. So a lot of the Sakai, um, a lot of Sakai questions are directed to me. And I love handling it, but we're getting more and more and more. So there's obviously an impact there on my time. And so we've been discussing these challenges for a while and struggling with implementing um, a plan to rectify them, but I thought I'd represent uh, visually for you what our plans are to try and help these, this, these challenges. So this is the current model of support that we have, um, and the center of it is FD, or faculty development. And this visual here is just focused on the educational technologies faculty development we provide, because we also do other things. Um, you can kind of ignore the eye clicker bubbles at the top. I just wanted to be complete in my, in my um, schematic of the faculty development we provide. So if we just focus at the bottom orange bubbles to do with Sakai, um, as you know, as I've said a few times, the, the Sakai support I provide are just-in-time support, the guidelines we have, you know, workshop slides um, and policies, just another word for guides really, and then the in-person workshops that I do, the drop-ins and then the specific course site geared training that I have. But obviously, as we've been discussing, this isn't enough. And so this is what I've come up with recently um, to propose the changes that we um, facilitate at our institution. And so what I really think needs to happen is not focus on the term of faculty development, but really think about institutional technology-enabled learning. Um, I'm getting more and more support requests from staff, not just faculty, and I'm happy to provide that support, and it's fun and challenging. So I think that you know my focus needs to be institutionally wide, not just faculty. Um, and so... In addition to the, uh, if we just focus on the Sakai part, um, are you there? Rebecca? Yeah, I can't hear anything. Oh, there we go. Sorry, everyone, for the pause. 
Um, Christian, say something if you can't hear me, but I'm going to keep talking now. Yeah, um, sorry about that. So um, for Sakai, in addition to just-in-time support, um, the guides and stuff, and the in-person workshops, what I need to do is really spend my time, um, you know, adding different kinds of live in-person workshops. And in addition to the course site management training that I already offer, and continue to um, reinvent and you know add to. I really need to focus time on creating advanced user training sessions, and that can be faculty or staff. But the questions that I answer there and the focus that I have is not on the standard course site tools, but just on general Sakai management skills um, and stuff like that. And in addition to that, one thing that I think will really help support the unique end user here is an online training program. Um, that addresses the common, most common questions that I get as a support person and shows how to basic manage your own Cairo site, being it, whether it is project or a course site. So a lot of the energy moving forward needs to be put into these two new things, the online training program and the advanced user training sessions. And so my final thoughts are that um, the project site use at CMCC has grown increasingly over the last few years, but supports to facilitate this gro growth has not been sufficiently developed. Um, clearly, just by providing core site type support to project site users isn't fitting the bill because they're using a completely different range of tools and have a completely different range of ideas. Um, and in order to address this issue, we're first going to need to rectify the resources challenge, which is time and personnel. Um, and we have a variety of strategies to do that, so I'll leave it at that, but um, we're hoping to make it work that we can address the main issue, which is that we need better support for project site users via the, the veins that I just suggested in the visual I was just showing you. And the final thing I just uh, wanted to say is that um, the challenges of supporting, you know, an ever-growing amount of Sakai users at the institution is something I really enjoy, and I'm looking forward to expanding my support institutionally. So thanks for listening to me talk. Um, I'll take any questions, and if there aren't many, maybe we can discuss um, those think points that I introduced at the beginning of the session about who in your institution gets the keys to, you know, maintain their own Sakai site and whether there are opportunities to br bring unique activity um, of project sites into your institution. So thanks very much. And sorry for that weird hiccup with the sound there for a minute. Well, that's kind of weird, but we, we got it fine. Uh, there's no questions, but if anyone is, uh, wants to ask a question, I can just unmute them. And they can just uh, ask the question if they, if they want to. So just feel free to Sounds raise good. Hand and just uh, ask the question if you want to. If not, I guess we're going to be done. <laughs>